Hello, this is Dr. Bruce Eimer on January 2nd, 2018. Hope your new year is off to a good start, as is mine. I'm here to talk with you very briefly about using hypnosis to control chronic pain. I've made several videos that I've posted on the uh, HypnoThoughts Live Facebook page about our upcoming workshop at HypnoThoughts Live in Las Vegas. Uh, and I just want to let you know that what we're going to be doing is illustrating some of the techniques on some of the future videos that I'm going to be making and posting on Facebook. So I'd like to alert you to stand by to my videos, which are forthcoming, which will demonstrate some of the techniques that I'll be teaching at the workshop this summer in August at the HypnoThoughts Live 2018 conference. Uh, you know, Hit the Thoughts Live 2018 is truly a conference on the evolution of hypnosis. It presents the best of the cutting edge practitioners of our art at one place where it's kind of hard to pick what courses you're going to take since there are so many good courses occurring at one time. Back to the pain issue. As a hypnotherapist who treats a lot of people with chronic pain, I have constantly been thinking through and devising different techniques and combinations of strategies to help people who have treatment-resistant chronic pain, which is a very pesky problem, and I have, it my, I have it myself. Well, one of the things that occurred to me was to make the videos that I'm going to be making that I'm going to post, which will demonstrate these techniques that we're going to go into in great detail and teach you how to do step by step this summer at HypnoThoughts Live. You will learn techniques of direct suggestion in hypnosis, techniques of imagery, dynamic imagery, the use of active imagination, psychodynamic imagery, and we will be covering hypnoanalysis, most notably techniques of hypnotic regression therapy as well as parts therapy. And I'll be assisted in that regards by my extremely talented and well-known friend and colleague, Roy Hunter, who is the resident expert on parts therapy. And we'll be talking about its applications to the treatment of clients with chronic pain. I wanna leave you with a thought on this brief video. And that is that, and you probably heard this before, that pain is a signal that there's something wrong. Well, when there's chronic pain, what it is signaling is that there is some issue with regards to an individual's functioning that needs to be addressed. Now, obviously, chronic pain impedes functioning because it's a burden to carry, but chronic pain develops as a result of dysfunction. So, for example, many people with back pain, severe back pain, when you look at their MRIs, they don't show anatomical dysfunction or anatomical derangements that are commensurate with the degree of impairment and disability that people report, as well as their uh, severity of pain. On the other hand, there have been a lot of studies that have documented the fact that people that don't complain of pain often, to a very significant degree, have significant abnormalities in their MRIs, in their spine, okay? So how can this be explained? For example, I have spinal stenosis, which is moderate to severe, and I have significant pain. My neurosurgeon and my orthopedic surgeon, my pain is so bad I need two, they both told me that just because my spinal stenosis is moderate to severe, it doesn't, doesn't condemn me to a life of severe pain, and they cited the research studies that I just mentioned. So how can that be? Well, there were several other studies that took groups of patients who had uh, severe spinal stenosis, and they divided those groups into the people that complained of pain and the people that didn't. And they then ran other tests on these people and what they found was the most significant difference between the pain sufferers and those that didn't have pain complaints 
both had spinal stenosis, was that the pain sufferers had significantly abnormal findings on surface electromyographic studies of the musculature, the lumbar paraspinal muscles for most of these people were low back pain uh, patients. So there was significant problems in muscle function. Nerve conduction studies showed abnormalities, uh, which, uh, which essentially assesses nerve firing latencies as well as uh, the uh, uh, electrical firings in the muscles, the paraspinalis muscles. People that have severe chronic pain have a lot of spasm, a lot of tension, a lot of muscular asymmetry, a lot of sprain and strain. And those are things that, be, that can be corrected as opposed to the actual spinal mechanical abnormalities, which that's another story. Well, hypnosis and the use of imagery and suggestion and lots of positivity and self-analysis can help people to overcome the blocks, that is the emotional blocks that first pinpoint them, and then after identifying them, work them through and release them rather efficiently, unlike other forms of therapy that don't use hypnosis. And once these emotional blocks are released, that allows people to straighten up, so to speak, to begin to respond to relaxation techniques. And so for those of you that have seen clients that have been not very responsive to hypnosis using relaxation and imagery and other direct suggestion methods, uh, people that have chronic pain and that you've tried to help with hypnosis, well, we're going to cover these methods that we found have been very effective and that address the underlying functional issues that are the reason for persistent pain. Well, that's it for today. Uh, Bruce Eimer here. Thanks for listening. Uh, remember, what plays in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what you learn at HypnoThoughts Live, well, you get to keep and take home with you.